Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House Escape, and I'm back with some more of Jeopardy! The Spring Puzzle Hunt from the University of Maryland's Puzzle Club. I've currently spent a total of four hours working on the Jeopardy! Puzzle Hunt, and in today's video, I'm about to spend another hour and a half uh, working on puzzles and adding that to our time. Up until now, I've found seven of the 17 feeder puzzle solutions, and I haven't had a chance to take a look at either of the meta puzzles yet, so that's on my list of things to do today, is to take a look at those and see if I can make any uh, head starts on that. Let's start our timer and get going. So at the end of the last video, I was working on this puzzle, Match Game. I had discovered that each of these descriptions was referencing two words that were off by just a letter, so putting evergreens before all else. Evergreens are firs, F-I-R-S, and putting them before all else is first, so F-I-R-S-T. I have all of my uh, solutions up until this point in my Excel spreadsheet, and I'm still missing a few um, that I can work on. But, right before the video ended, I was able to take a look at those additional letters that I had added to some of these words, and guess, based off of the ones that I had, that it spells letter positions. So my guess is that this is referencing where we add that letter into the word. So I'm adding a column here for us to indicate where that added letter goes. So in first, the extra letter is the final T, which is the fifth letter. And here it's the E in mean, which is the second. And so I'm just gonna go down and do this for all of the, all of the answers so far. Then the question is, what do we do with those letter positions? It could be used as an index, I'm thinking, to maybe index into the clue. I'm gonna give that a try and see if that comes up with anything. Um, okay, this looks like it could be something. I'm liking like the FL combination. There's a good proportion of vowels um, But I don't immediately see what this could be so let me see if I can get one or two of these other uh, Answers especially towards the top Where to find one's tempo Where to find one's tempo tempo could be pace or speed it's also scuba experts from around the world. Oh, okay, um, so I'm pretty sure this is divers. And diverse? Yeah, so diverse adds an E to the end. Okay, and that's the E for letter position, and that E is added in the seventh position, which gives us an X. Hmm. This could be Roman numerals at the start. Ah, I see, for this first one, it's pace place. The, the place that you find the tempo, which is the pace, and that adds the L in the second position, which gives us an H. Okay, so suddenly this indexing method is not looking particularly promising. Letter positions. So what else am I going to do with that? Oh, I get it. These, these nonsensical titles are going to play the role in the extraction here. I'm not indexing into the clue for where the letter positions are. I should be indexing into these nonsense titles. Yeah, so I have them here in my document. I never used them and I completely forgot they were there. So let me delete that. So here, the L is in the second position of place. So we should take an A for that. And then we need the seventh position of uh, diverse here, which gives us the seventh letter here, which is an N. So I'm guessing this is gonna spell answer. All right, so now what do we have here? Uh, the first letter of the second one is a B. And then we have the fourth letter is an A. First letter over there is a C. Uh, fourth letter here is a K. So answer back something. Uh, we have an A here, and what do we have down here? The sixth letter over there is an S. So I'm thinking the answer is backwards. So I'm going to try backwards as the answer here. Okay, so for match game, we're trying backwards. 
Oh, I didn't notice when I typed in letter positions, it gave me this bonus note of keep going. Well, that's very cool. All right, let's try backwards. Backwards is the correct answer. Okay, so I've added backwards to my list of answers that I've obtained from the feeder puzzles. We still have quite a few to go, but I want to take a quick look at these two meta puzzles, maybe make sheets for them as needed, and see if I can jump into those. So in this hunt, there's two meta puzzles, and I have to sort through which answers go to which of the two meta puzzles. So that's going to be an additional challenge, especially if I don't have all the answers yet. Um, the first meta puzzle is called Fear Factor. Let's take a look. Preface to Fear Factor, Ken, James, and Brad found themselves in jeopardy of being voted off a remote tropical island. We interviewed one of them here. Okay, so that immunity challenge went pretty bad. I may have dropped the key we needed to open a chest with our puzzle pieces into the bottom of the ocean. Whoops. But I'm not too worried because yesterday I went searching through the jungle for three hours and found an advantage. Hopefully no one noticed I was gone. I can only use it once, so I'm definitely not going to use it now. Everyone loves me and wants to work with me. <laughs> Those are famous last words in Survivor. <laughs> I know because they say so to my face, and when I walk up to them, they stop what they're talking about and avoid eye contact. I'm loving this. Okay, I gotta get focused. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty good at reading people, and my tribe mates have trustworthy written all over their nervous smiles. But just in case, I will be bringing the advantage to tribal council. If I feel like something is off, I might have to play it. Will this contestant realize he's in danger of being voted out, or will he waste his lifeline to stay in the game? You may know it as the fear of factoring, but we like to call it... a uh, long phobia word. <laughs> okay, here's our problems. We have nine of them, uh, which I'm guessing correspond to nine solutions in some way. The question is, how do I know which solutions to use? And then what am I going to do with them here once I have them? It definitely looks like I might have to factor some of these equations. Uh, so like, A minus 2 is already as factored as it can be. Uh, you can multiply it by 1, but I mean, that's about it. This one, what do we have here? I think we factor this as A minus 1, B minus 5. Yeah, that should work. Um, so these seem to be things that I can factor. Okay, so I have a couple of answers here that could be a fear. Um, like the fear of snakes is a very real thing. There's probably a fear of witches. So maybe I need to... Uh, separate out my solutions that have a fear associated with them. I can look up the corresponding phobia... And then maybe th these factors, when I factor into these, it tells me, like, which letter to take from that phobia, like an index. So, like, uh, this one I said was A minus 1, B minus 5, so maybe I take the first and the fifth letter. Um, I still need to know which answer goes to problem 8, um, but maybe they're alphabetical or something when I look them up later. Okay, let's take check out the second meta puzzle, which is Supermarket Sweep. Ken, James, and Brad found themselves in jeopardy of being voted off a remote tropical island. We interviewed one of them here. We lost the immunity challenge today. Members from our tribe had to row in from the ocean, collect puzzle pieces eight feet in the air by climbing a ladder, and then solving the puzzle. I can't help but feel it's my fault. We were doing fine until I fumbled the puzzle. I'm not good at slide puzzles, what can I say? Well, my teammate didn't help solving it either, and our rowers spent 10 minutes paddling in a circle instead of heading to shore. Oh, and our strongest athlete wasn't able to hold the ladder upright, so people kept falling off. But it's my fault, I should have done the puzzle faster, I couldn't vote anyone else out for my mistake. Still, I hope my torch stays lit until tomorrow. Will this contestant's tribe vote him out for being bad at the puzzle, or will he stab a tribe mate in the back, extinguishing their life from the game? Oh, this is really cool too. So, um, I'm gonna take a look at the puzzle in a second, but I just noticed that off on the, the right-hand margin here, they have an errata to the puzzle. So, often when puzzle hunts go live, they have errata associated with them, or errors that were in the 
printing of the puzzle. It could be just a typo or sometimes something a little more serious. Um, but one of the things that, that a good puzzle hunt does is it notifies everybody, makes it really clear when something has gone wrong and when they've corrected it so that everybody can start working on the correct version. And so I think this is a pretty cool way of doing that. I know I'm wasting a lot of time by explaining this, but I'm seeing a lot of things that this puzzle hunt has done well structurally and I just feel the need to point them out. Okay, supermarket sweep. The deals in the store are mind-blowing. Okay, I was thinking this looked a little bit like Minesweeper. Um, so that's that's interesting. Too bad the stickers fell off each product. Now we don't know how many deals are around them. How many deals are around them? Okay, so deals are mines. So each of the different fruits here represents a different number of mines in the Minesweeper game. I could almost... Maybe I could probably solve this now if it's a logic puzzle. Where does the meta portion of this come in? There's 17 feeder puzzles, and I think we're using nine of them in the Fear Factor meta puzzle. So that should leave me with eight answers to use for this meta puzzle. I don't immediately see where the answers from previous puzzles fits into this one. I'm gonna take a just a real quick look and see if I can break into the logic puzzle portion of this. We have to assign the number four to one of these symbols. Uh, it can't be the avocado because there's a lot of those on the edges that don't have four spaces around them. Same with like this donut, you can't put four things near that donut. Well, okay, it can't be the bread because if bread was four, then all four of these spaces would have uh, a deal in them, which means the cheese would be at least four, if not higher, so bread's rolled out. So either the cheese or the eggplant is four. We could also start from the opposite end and look at the zero. Um, obviously the cheese can't be zero, because then there would be none around the bread. The donuts couldn't be zero, because that would block out all of these spaces around this avocado. The bread can't be zero because that would block out everything around this donut. So zero's either the eggplant or the avocado. I think eggplant would make the most sense because it's so far away from everything else. Like just putting zeros over there would just kind of block everything off. Um, but again, I'm not seeing... Oh, I do actually see it can't be the avocado because that would block off everything around this eggplant with these three avocados. Okay, so we can break into this puzzle here. I'm going to... Uh, translate this over to my Excel sheet and give it a quick start. Okay, so I've quickly transcribed the puzzle over into an Excel spreadsheet. I've replaced the emojis that were used in the puzzle with what I believe those are all called, and I noticed that they start with the letters A through E. So I'm just using A through E to notate the clues at this point. I'll be replacing them with the numbers as I piece together which one goes with which. Now we already realized that the eggplant is zero. So anywhere that we see an E in this puzzle, I'm gonna replace it with a zero. And that means that none of the spaces around the zeros have any mines or deals in them. Uh, so that leaves this A in an interesting position. There's only one available spot next to it, and we know that the avocado doesn't also represent zero, so it must represent a one. So I'm gonna put that there. And now all of the A's I can change to ones. Maybe I'll just do, I'll just do an O for now to represent the ones that have the deals in them. Uh, that means that this one is settled all around it. Um, I don't think we can find any others. Now, we also realized earlier that the only options for what can have four around it were, at the time, the eggplant and the cheese. Uh, and, of course, we've now realize that the eggplant is zero, so that means that the cheese must have four. So that means that bread and donut are either two or three each, so I can keep that in mind. Actually, this donut can only have two next to it, uh, so the donuts have to be two, and then the bread must have threes, so replacing all these Bs with threes. Okay, now we've replaced all of our symbols with numbers, it becomes a 
normal Minesweeper puzzle, or at least I think it does. So there's the two around that two. Um, that settles this one over here. This three already has two near it, so one of these two spaces that I'm going to color yellow for now has a mine in it, which means that this four has that one as well, but it also has to have three others that go there, there, and there. Uh, we can do something similar for these two spaces because of this one, and that means that this three it has three around it at this point. Um, this two we can find easily, and we can settle that one as well. That solves this three up here, and the four near it as well, and that takes care of the entire top. Uh, this one is taken care of, um, so now this two has to see a mine there. Uh, this one is now taken care of, and this one is taken care of with a mine there. Um, okay, so this two means we have to have a mine here and here, which is our one from these two yellow spaces. This two has to see two mines down there, and that takes care of the three. Um, and this two has two mines near it already, so the final mine has to go there. Oh, uh, what's this space? This space has a mine as well. Okay, so that's the Minesweeper puzzle. This is a 9x9 nine nine grid. I might have guessed that answers were going to run across here, but we don't have 18 puzzles, do we? Did I miss a puzzle? Hold on, I might have missed a puzzle. Let me go back to the page. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I missed a puzzle. There's 18 total puzzles, and I forgot to include one of them on my list. And so I'm thinking we're going to assign an answer, maybe, to each row of this grid, and then take the letters from that answer where the mines are located. I noticed that there's two mines in every row, so I feel pretty good about that. So it's possible that we're entering answers into the white spaces, and that's uh, something that'll tell me how these words get entered in here. I wonder if all of the answers could be nine letters as well. Do I have a lot of nine letter answers? This is a nine letter answer, backwards. So is disbanded and hazelnuts. Okay, I've added a column here to tell me how long my various answers are. I currently have three answers that are nine letters long. And coincidentally enough, the other answers, thinking, bald people, which snake, and foreign language, are the kinds of things that I could imagine there's a word existing for for the fear of those. So I think those answers go with the fear factor meta puzzle, and I think these nine letter answers go with the supermarket sweeps meta puzzle. So now there's the question of how do I know which of these goes to which row, and I'm guessing it has to do with matching the A, B, C, and D from the emojis. So maybe it'd be helpful if I actually put those initial letters back in the grid here. Oh, it doesn't look like there's going to be a word for this row. Oh, but now that I look at it, actually, these could just be alphabetical. Like, these rows could just go um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And so hazelnuts would go in the H row, disbanded goes in the D row, and backwards goes in the B row. That's promising. And then we take the letters from the uh, spaces that have the O's in them. So this is AD. This is SN, NU. Um, so it's probably too early for me to get an answer from this um, with just three answers. So I think I'm going to come back to it when I get some more nine letter words. Okay, so I've used up about half of my time solving the first puzzle and taking a look at those two meta puzzles. I'd like to get maybe one more solve in here today, uh, if possible. This amazing race puzzle looks interesting. I'm going to give this one a try. There's so many detours in this race, even though it's just the first season. Look out for sharp turns, not intersections. Okay. So I wonder if I actually need to look up the first season of The Amazing Race. All right, I'm going to go to the first season of The Amazing Race and take a look at the detours. Uh, there were 13 episodes, and we have 13 words, so that's promising. Ah, that's right. Okay, so I'm on the Wikipedia page for the um, first season of The Amazing Race now. And each detour is described uh, for each of the 13 episodes. And I'm remembering now that the detour gave them two options. The first... Uh, episode had the options air or land and land is one of our um, 
options here. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be entering the second choice into these into this grid here. So I'm going to transfer everything over to my Excel sheet. Okay, so I've managed to get the entire grid over into my Excel spreadsheet here, and I just have to go through the Wikipedia page and find what the other half of all these uh, detours is. Okay, so the first detour was air or land. The second detour was near or far. Okay, so these don't go in episode order, that's fine. They might be alphabetical. Listening or puzzling? Who would pick listening over puzzling? Yeah, these definitely look like they're alphabetical by the second half of the detour. Okay, so now I have to enter these new answers into the grid. Like, there's only one three-letter answer, and there's only one three-letter place in the grid, so air must fit in there. Do we have a four-letter answer that begins with an R? Ride. Okay, so ride goes there. So we need an eight letter answer with an A in that spot. And the only eight letter answer is elephant. Now I need this five letter answer that goes down and around the corner with a T, it's steep. Um, this four letter answer has an E at the end. Uh, there could be multiple. Nope, just hike. This is a 10 letter answer that starts down here and loops around. Um, I have two 10 letter answers, but only one with that E that I need is horsepower. Now I need a four letter answer that starts with an H and it's hoof. Next is a 15 letter answer. There's only full body massage. So nine letter answer is listening. Who would pick listening over puzzling? Uh, the last four letter answer is near, which goes there. We have a seven letter answer that starts here and worms its way down through this. Uh, that's private. 10 letter word is tough climb. And the last six letter answer is volley. Now the original puzzle says, look out for sharp turns, not intersections. So I'm looking for these sharp right hand turns, I think. So what am I doing with these sharp turns? Eschower, flest, race. So I'm seeing the word race down here towards the bottom, which makes me think I'm on the right path. Okay, there's also this note on the main puzzle page that the answer is nine letters long. Oh, maybe it's only the longer answers that made sharp turns. So like this R was made up of two different answers, ride and air, so maybe that one doesn't get considered. Whereas this H was an elephant that turned around the corner, as was this answer for steep. So that one doesn't get included. So this is Shawl's race. Um, I feel like we're getting closer. Shaw, shoe, shawl. Maybe I should try Googling this phrase. S H O E L E S S T. Oh, shoeless, shoeless street race. I see. I had to write it out to see it, <laughs> but it spells shoeless. Oh, shoeless trace. Shoeless trace? What does that mean? Footprint. Could they be going for footprint? That's nine letters. I'm gonna try footprint as the final answer to this puzzle. This is the amazing race. We're trying the answer footprint. Yes, footprint's correct. That is a nine letter answer. So it's going to feed into our supermarket meta puzzle. And it's gonna give us the letters P and T. Uh, still might be a little bit early to solve this. Bring up new traumatic. <laughs> Are these gonna read down the columns, like the first and then the second, or is it gonna read across? I'm not sure. Okay, I don't think we have enough answers to solve this right now. 
Okay. That's all the time that we have today. We made some significant progress on one of the two metas, and I at least have an idea of where to go on the other one. Uh, and we successfully solved two more puzzles, the match game as well as the amazing race puzzle. So that's been a total of five and a half hours that I've spent solving this puzzle hunt. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying this series. I plan on finishing all of the filming for this series before I start posting videos. So feel free to post all sorts of spoiler-like comments down below. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what you think about the puzzles that I'm working on so far. And hopefully in a future video, you'll get to see if your predictions are correct. I'm looking forward to solving more of this hunt, but until then, have a great day, and as always, happy escaping. Happy escaping.